Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. You guys really liked the first episode, so I was excited to get into the second episode. Plus, you guys submitted a lot of great ideas over the past few days, but for today's, we are gonna do Dragon with a Monocle's idea of a battle-scarred sea dragon. So before I get started telling you guys about this drawing, I just wanna preface, I don't know if my voice is gonna turn out sounding different, but I might sound a little bit deeper and raspier. Um, that's because I'm currently under the weather. I thought I had strep throat, but apparently I have some other weird throat infection, don't know what it is. So I've been nursing it with tea and soup, and that's all I can do, because I can't even like eat without it being in super pain. Um, so you'll just have to excuse my raspy voice, but by the time you see this video, I'm probably gonna be perfectly fine and healed up since I'm recording this ahead of time. But just a FYI, in case you're wondering my, why my voice might sound extra deep or something, I don't know how the recording's gonna turn out. So anyway, I had a lot of fun starting out with the sketching of this dragon. Um, I've always really loved sea dragons. I mean, I love dragons in general, but specifically sea dragons, because I love doing all these fins and extra frills and things on the dragon, and having a sea dragon is just a great excuse to have all these fins and frills and cool little accessories all over it. And then making it battle scarred was also really fun just because you can add all these cool scars in different places to add some like effect of like, oh, maybe it was in this type of battle or something. And that was really fun. But I think the best part is incorporating actual sea life. So in the second sketch, I incorporated uh, a sea dragon, which is a type of seahorse that kind of has these longer I guess it kind of looks like kelp or ty some type of sea life uh, extensions to it. And then for the third sketch, I also experimented with doing a lionfish with its big spines and different, um, I guess, <laughs> chunks on it. I don't know how to describe things today, but spines and extensions off of its body. Uh, I tried that on the dragon and I really liked all of the designs. So I was thinking about combining multiple different sea lives together to make the final dragon. So we'll have the battle scar, we'll have a little bit of the uh, seahorse sea dragon and some of the lion turtle. So after nailing down the rough sketch, I got a new piece of paper. I have a nice blender card that I use for my Copics and I started kind of sketching out and trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to combine everything. Cause yes, I wanted the sea dragon, I wanted the lion, uh, not lion turtle. Oh my gosh, I almost, <laughs> I wanted the sea dragon. I wanted the lionfish and I wanted this thing to look like a really fierce, ferocious, battle-scarred sea dragon. And it was a lot of fun to dive in and just start adding to this. I put the base down of where I wanted this neck and head to be, and then I just started adding. Like, I just kept putting different parts on it. I had um, an image of the sea dragon and the lion turtle up at the same time. And I just kept looking back. I'm like, oh, why don't we try this? Why don't we add this? Let's add this here. And it was just a lot of fun to just keep adding and layering all these really cool spines on this thing. I also was kind of trying to think about colors while I was in the sketch phase. So I was trying to break up different areas where I could have different types of color um, along the body. Cause if they're based off of a tropical fish, it'd be interesting to add some cool and interesting tropical colors. So after I had the uh, sketch phase done, jumped in and did a line art. I first start out by going around, I think it's a 0.5 micron fine liner. I really should write down which tools I use. Maybe by episode three, I'll think ahead and <laughs> write down exactly what pen size I use. Um, but I start with a uh, fine liner first, and then I go around later and add a little bit of a thicker line to parts that I want to pop out or that are on top of other lines so I can add some depth to the line art. And I also added some more effects like within the scars and in other places throughout the body with the line work. And God, guys, this guy was a lot of fun, especially, like I said before, the battle scarred part. It's cool to make the fins kind of look all battle scarred and looks like they had uh, holes and cuts and tears in it. And then I also added some like octopus ring type of things like it, or a squid or an octopus one of the two. Like I could imagine this dragon fighting like basically the Kraken <laughs> and there's these like giant tentacle things that were on its neck and it would probably at least leave a mark if it was Recent, it could potentially just leave a temporary mark, but I could also see it potentially leaving some scarring, depending on how intense this Kraken fight was. So I wanted to put a couple of those along his body. So it was fun kind of thinking about and brainstorming how 
uh, the scars would relate to battles that he's been in. And then also, I just had a lot of fun with the face type. I always, there. it's a fun fact, if you didn't know. Um, when you're designing dragons, there's a lot of different facial structures that you can use, which you'll see a lot throughout this series, um, at least from how I have drawn dragons. This is kind of what I base my thing off of. You have either a triangular face, which is kind of more long to a point face, a square face, or a round face. It's kind of like the same idea when you do character design. You can do different um, facial structures to convey a different mood or um, character personality. You can do the same with dragons. So if you guys haven't done this before, I'd really recommend trying to experiment with different face structures because I will admit the triangle one is the very, I guess, default look for dragons, which isn't bad. It's just that's usually what it is because dragons are usually portrayed as evil or menacing. And by doing a triangular angled face, that's the character trait that you're giving off with that shape. But if you do kind of more of a square or roundish character, you might give off the impression of like a, um, I guess like a tough character or like a soft, kind character. It just depends how you structure the face. For example, um, what is it? Dragonheart, I think was what it was called, where Sean Connery voiced the dragon. If you go back and look at the dragon, his face is more square because if they made him more triangular, he would have looked more like an evil dragon, so they made him a square face. Sorry, side character design note for any people who are looking to draw more dragons. Try different face shapes to convey different character ideas, and there's actually a ton of things online. If you guys want to learn about um, shape language, just Google that and see character design shape language, and you will see all these different shapes and what they convey, and you can apply those to your dragons. All right, so I went on my little side tangent of character design. So back into here, I had a lot of fun coloring this guy because I really wanted to push, like I said earlier, the uh, kind of idea of exotic fish coloring. So I did some bright oranges and some blues. And then I think later on I add some uh, bright whites and yellows, but this was a lot of fun to blend, which is also why I love my Copics. I've heard other markers can do the same. I haven't really experimented with others as much, but one of the things I love to do with any type of alcoholic based marker is to take a very bright color and blend it with a much darker color and just see the cool transition between the two. So this one going from an orange to blue kind of gave this really interesting, I guess greenish orange in the middle and helped the orange pop even more. And I just really like how that transition turned out on the spines and in the, uh, I don't know what you, yeah, basically the spines. I don't know why I was gonna call it something else, but the spines. So then I had a lot of fun just filling all these in and I have a uh, patent pending two marker technique where I color with one and then hold the other so I don't have to keep uncapping the cap constantly. So I was holding these two markers pretty consistently and just like swapping them between my two hands and then constantly blending back and forth. Uh, because I, I've done it before where I set down the marker that's uncapped and that has ended in uh, very bad consequences of it either going all over my paper or leaking or there's been other things that have happened. So I just do this uh, two hand approach where I just keep swapping them back and forth until I'm done. So then after finishing the blues and the oranges, I go in with some darker blues and blend it in for some more shadows. And uh, this really started to help different things pop more and I got really excited as it kept going on. And then all that was left was the belly, which I decided to do kind of light, uh, like a white with some yellows in it to make it really pop and be different. I just was really liking the idea of having bright-ish colors for this guy. And uh, it just, I really love how all of the colors complement each other really well. I also feel that this recording, now that I'm watching it again, the orange doesn't seem as bright from this camera angle, but I'm looking at the picture right now and it's a much brighter orange compared to what my camera's recording. It still looks good, but see like in this angle, the orange looks crazy bright. <coughs> Excuse me, but like this orange, in this camera, for some reason, all the colors look way brighter. I gotta figure out why my other camera is calibrated. 
so the, like the colors aren't as vibrant. I'm gonna mess around with that, but I really love the orange the most. I think, I wish I put a little bit more in the body area, like some more stripes like I did in the face. I kind of wish I did more on the body. I had a feeling that I thought about it, but I completely spaced on it when I actually went into color. So we're getting really close to the end of this guy, and I just want to remind everyone that with these 100 dragon challenges, we are doing like a community challenge as well. You guys will see the hashtag at the end, but I wanted to plug it here and now. If you guys want to take on this challenge and do your interpretation of the battle scarred sea dragon, you can. So you don't need to redraw mine. I think there was a little bit of confusion. You don't need to take mine and interpret it in your style. I want you to take the prompt battle scarred dragon and make your own dragon based off that prompt. So if you would like to participate and submit your own dragons into the prompt to potentially be featured in next week's episode, you can put it under the hashtag KM100Dragons on Twitter or Instagram, and you might have the chance to be featured at the end of each week's video, and I'm planning on posting these every Friday from here on out. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video, and I hope you enjoyed this 100 Dragons Challenge, and thank you for everyone who submitted a zombie dragon. They all were amazing, and I just love them so much. You guys are awesome, and I have so many talented people in the community. All of you are amazing, all your art was great, so thanks again for submitting. And if you guys aren't already, you can go and hit that subscribe button. I have new videos every week, ranging from the 100 Dragons to Monster Mashes to other fun art challenges. So thanks again, guys, and I'm excited to see what you're going to make for the Battle Scarred Sea Dragon. Bye, everybody.